Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, we'll be going through how to create a multi-boot USB flash drive. I consider this to be the easiest and most efficient way to combine and manage all your installation files and ISO images in a single USB flash drive. So instead of carrying a bunch of USB sticks with different operating systems, different ISO files, data recovery utilities, backup utilities, hardware testing, malware scanning and all that, this approach will save you all that stress, provide you more convenience and of course save you some money. And if you are worried about redundancy, then you can simply configure two USB sticks in the same way I'll be showing in this tutorial and keep one for your backup. Generally, this would work with any USB sticks, but if you have the convenience of using the USB 3.0 or higher, that could save you some time both when creating the toolkit and when using it to make your installations. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so today's video is brought to you by Prime Tech Mart. Prime Tech Mart is an online store for digital software licenses, mainly Microsoft licenses. They have Windows 10 Pro Retail, Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro OEM licenses. They also offer different versions of Office, including this Home and Business Edition for both Windows and Mac. Now, obviously, these licenses are already at discounted prices. But in addition to that, Prime Tech Mart is offering you, the viewers, an additional 20% discount on any of these licenses if you choose to buy. The promo code for the 20% discount is ET20 as shown on the screen. They have several payment options you can choose from. Licenses are delivered instantly on the checkout page after you've made the payment and a copy is also sent to your chosen email address for future referencing. I will leave their links down in the video description. Okay, so in case you are wondering what size of USB flash drive you will need for this, that will depend on the size and number of ISO images you intend to store on the same flash drive. Here I'll be using a 32GB USB 3.0 flash drive. If you intend to keep appending or adding more ISO images to your flash drive over time, then you should consider using a much bigger capacity than the size of your current ISO images. Next, you need a multi-boot USB toolkit. This is simply an application that provides you with a user-friendly interface to select your preferred ISO image from your stored images during boot-up. Now, there are quite a number of multi-boot utility toolkits out there, but here I'll be using Ventoy. I find it quite easy to use. It has great reviews and is completely free. So head over to Ventoy.net and here you can see a bullet list of all its key features. It's 100% open source, meaning it's completely free. It's simple to use, it's fast and all that. Another interesting information on this page is the number of ISO files that have been tested with this toolkit. It currently stands at over 560. If you want to see more specifics of that, simply click on this tested ISO. Wait a bit for the page to load. And here you have a list of all tested ISOs according to the operating systems. You have Windows, you have Linux, you have Unix and others. So the actual number at the time of making this video is 567. Of course, this should be going higher over time. Another piece of information here is the supported booting methods. Here you have the legacy and the UEFI methods. And as you can see, most of the OS distributions are supported by both methods. Now I'll go ahead and download the Ventor utility. For that, click on download from the main menu. On this download page, you have the most recent version of the application. Here, as you can see, they also have the Linux version as well as the live CD ISO version. I'll be using the Windows version, so I'll simply click on it. And then it takes me to this GitHub page where it gives some additional information. And then you have the download links down here. Again, here I will click on the Windows version and then wait for the download to complete. Afterwards, I'll just click to extract and then drag the folder to my desktop. Here I already have my ISO files all collected in one folder. Again, you can have as many ISO files as you want. The only limitation here is the size of your flash drive. Here I'm using a 32 gig drive and when I do a rough sum up of the size of my ISO files, I already have over 20 gigs. So with a couple more ISO files, I may soon be maxing out the capacity of the flash drive. 
Now that should give you a sense of what size of flash drive you will need. Obviously, if you have more ISO files or anticipate to include more in the future, then you should go for maybe 64 gig flash drive or larger. And if you want to verify if your ISO file is supported by the Ventoy utility, you can simply go back to this Ventoy page and then click on the list of tested ISOs. Now, even if your intended ISO is not on the list, you can simply try it out. It's, it's as simple as dragging and dropping to your flash drive and then test to see if it works. Now to get the utility set up, I will simply run the Ventoy application from the folder I extracted earlier. Before that, do ensure you have backed up the files on your USB flash drive or at least ensure you don't need them again because the Ventoy utility will override all the data on your flash drive. So from the extracted folder, you should have this Ventoy to disk application. Here, double click on it. Hit yes on the user account control and should have this installation dialog box pop up. Here it automatically detects your USB flash drive. If you have multiple USB flash drives attached, then do ensure you have the right one selected. Otherwise, you can simply drop down and then select your preferred flash drive. Next, click on install. And here it pops out a warning to remind you that the disk will be formatted and all the data will be lost. So ensure you've done your backup. Here I will hit yes. And then it starts to format and install the Ventoy application. This happens really quickly. Afterwards, you should check to ensure that the version of Ventoy on your flash drive corresponds with the version you downloaded or to the latest version from Ventoy. If not, you can simply use this update option to update to the latest version. Now, this interface also supports different languages, so you can choose your preferred language from here. And with that done, you are good to go. The rest is simply drag and drop process. So now, if you go to your computer folder, you should have your flash drive renamed as Ventoy. And when you open it, it should be empty. Now you can simply copy paste or drag and drop your ISO files to the disk. It's really that simple. Here I will first add three of the ISO images. Later on, I will use the Windows 10 ISO to demonstrate what adding more ISO images to your previous collections look like. Again, remember that the overall size of the ISO files you can have on the disk depends on the size of the disk. I wouldn't encourage maxing it out completely. At least you should ensure you have a couple of gigabytes left on the flash drive at all times. And if need be, you can upgrade to a larger capacity. Now we are done with copying our ISO files. Let's see what this looks like when we try to boot up from the USB stick. So I plug my USB stick, power on the PC, and then select the USB drive from the one-time boot device option. Here, as you can see, we have the Ventoy interface, and from here, we can choose what ISO image we would want to boot into. And now I will quickly demonstrate what adding more ISO images would look like. So I boot back to my Windows, attach my Ventoy disk, open it up from my computer folder. Then, simply drag and drop any more ISO images I want. And when next I boot up from the USB, I should now have the new ISO file also added to the list of possible ISO images I can boot from. Now, if you are wondering how to get a Windows 10 ISO file, I have made a video tutorial on how to get that directly from Microsoft. I will leave the link down in the video description. And again, if you would want to get Windows 10 or Office licenses, you can grab one from Prime Tech Mart. I will leave their links down in the video description. And that is it for this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for updates on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.